Alright guys, I just want to show you something stupid I always see. It's focused AF. Alright, I'd get a kick out of that. I would. Um, so the one thing here, there's a couple things, before I even take it to roof, I would rewrite a couple of these, right? How do we rewrite this here? Good. Minus 3x to the... Beautiful. Now I do a derivative. And it's going to become, very soon, it's going to become very important to keep track of what f of x is, what f prime of x is. So I often have people put a prime here, even though they haven't started the derivative yet. And then later when it's asking you to find the slope, you might plug the thing in the wrong place. I mean, so you've got to be, I haven't taken a derivative yet. I'm just rewriting what f is. Now do f prime. This becomes 12x cubed minus 12x. 6 fifths x to the good, negative 2 fifths plus 9 x to the negative 4. All right, that one should have hopefully been. No big deal. This one, I had a few people ask me, and this is true no matter where the hell it's sitting, anytime you have a constant sitting somewhere, it's, its derivative would be zero. Now, if it's attached to something, that means it's not really a product rule because the piece that would have that piece done derivative, it would be zero. Let me say that again better. So if I had two types of function, I'm not going to do product rule because two prime would be zero. So that piece wouldn't even show up. So that's why I say the shortcut is constants come for the ride, unless they're by themselves. Another way to look at this is how many x's are in this, how many x's are in this two, <laughs> that expression. So yeah, it's two x to the zero. Zero would come down, who gives a shit because it kills it, right? That's another weird ass way to look at it, but it's much better to realize it's a constant, it's flat, the slope is zero. So now I can just focus on this guy. And this guy, of course, is a, what rule? No product rule. So derivative the first guy times the second plus derivative, and so this is a negative x cubed, right? Well, you guys know what's going to happen here. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. So I do end up with negative three x squared cosine plus x cubed sine. Just because the negatives canceled in that second piece. How are you guys doing? All right. Okay. Uh, to be honest, if the question is just take the derivative. There's no real reason to factor it because nothing's going to cancel. It's not going to. If my question was find where this has horizontal tangent lines. Then you want to factor it, set each factor equal to zero, right? So then up to that point is fine. Yeah, yeah, this is just derivative, I'm done. There's nothing really useful by factoring it. All right, just to give myself some more space here. Well, I could maybe do that here. What's the derivative of five to something? Right, just like this guy. Derivative of seven to something is seven to that thing, ln seven. And if that thing is more complicated than x, it's got to get a term, right? And again, I don't know if you guys really understood what I meant by this. We always do chain rule. Times x prime, what's x prime? What's x prime? One. So that's, it doesn't really show up. That's why I don't, I always say chain rule doesn't need to be written unless the inside function's more complicated than x. Is that inside function more complicated than x? Yeah. Yes. So what is five to the something? What's that? It's five to that thing. So f prime would be five to that thing times 
LN5. That's the adjustment for the base being wrong. Times LN5. Times, yeah, the derivative of the inside. You just got to make sure that that's not inside the LN, and blah, blah, blah. So there's better ways to write that, but that's basically it. So it's the derivative of 5 to something. Well, that's 5 to that thing times ln 5. And then that something gets its own term. What's the derivative of x squared minus 3x? 2x minus 3. That's the chain piece. People looking at it. What's going on, guys? Let me, let me make, give myself some more room. So how do you take the derivative of 5 to something? It's 5 to that thing times ln 5, right? times the derivative of the inside. Yeah. Chain rule. So you end up with, let's write this better, 2x minus 3, ln 5, times 5 to the x squared minus 3x. That's what it is. Now I'd hope hope you understand uh, everything we're doing. I could do, if I really needed to, I, I could do the limit definition derivative to get that derivative. But we built things on rules, and we've figured out function derivatives in different ways, so we don't have to do that. It would have to work the same way if I want, if I did. Uh, another thing is, the answer is not going to be immediately apparent, right? You're like, I didn't expect that. I would say, what the hell did you expect? Holy shit, we have no idea. That's a funky-ass thing, isn't it? Did anybody try to graph that thing? Probably, probably not. If I were you, I'd be like, what the shit did that look like? So its slope is going to be funky, because the graph is funky, right? So don't, don't look at that and go, what? You never know, shit, it's going to be funky when the function's funky. Okay, a lot of funky. Real quick, these two. Zero. Yeah, y prime is zero, that's a number. y prime equals zero, that's a number. I like it. Uh, this guy, not too evil. So if you use quotient rule, the derivative of 3e e to the x is just 3e e to the x times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, 2, all over the bottom square. Please, dear God, don't kill one of these. Fight the urge to do that, right? And then if you multiply this through, you get 6x e to the x plus 9 e to the x minus 3. 6 e to the x, so you should get 3. E to the, is, that, is that cool? Because you get 9 e to the x minus 6 e to the x is 3 e to the x, all over 2x plus 3. Now, now anything you can do with that is really no point to it, to be honest. Nothing else is going to cancel. Right? So sure, you can take an e to the, a 3e e to the x out of the top. Yay, but it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Now again, if my question was, where does this have horizontal tangent lines, then I would want to do that. Because I need to factor it so I can see where it's zero, blah, blah, blah. But this is just find the derivative. I did. I'm done. Now, in general, when you see A, it's a constant. C is the most uh, used constant of all time, but A and B, you'll see those as constants also. So the derivative of ln of something is 1 over that thing, and then what's the derivative of the inside? So what happens to the A's? Cancel. Now, please tell me, somebody tell me that that freaks you out a little bit. So the natural log of x derivative is the same thing as the derivative of the natural log of 18 billion and 3 x. They have the exact same derivative. It's, on one level, that should freak you out. On another level, if you think about it, it, it makes perfect sense. It doesn't matter where shit. Uh, if I change somebody's y-intercept, and that's the only thing I change, the, how does that change the slope? It doesn't. If that's the only change I make, it doesn't change the slope at all. So be cool with that. And you're all like, what's that got to do with this thing? Well, what's the rule for ln? How do I rewrite ln of a product? Product. Okay. 
ln of a times x is ln of, please tell me. Ooh. All right, you guys, uh, you have to go back and re-study your logarithmic rules, or maybe you guys are, sometimes you're just quiet. So I've got to figure out which one it is. Do you not remember it all, or are you just being quiet? I don't know. If you forgot your logarithmic rules, holy shit, you need to go back. The natural log, uh, the log of a product, what do I do with powers when I multiply things? I add the powers. So the log of a product is the sum of the logs. So this will be natural log of A plus natural log of X. How is this related to natural log of X then? I've moved it up by this much. I've changed the Y intercept. So of course the slope doesn't give a shit about that. In fact, how do you take this guy's derivative? What's the derivative of ln a? Zero. ln a is a constant. The derivative of ln x is one over x. There you go. That's why it makes total sense that that's just going to cancel out. Is everybody cool with that? Okay, I like it. Oh yeah, our favorite one. So the derivative of ln of a fractional thing. Did I turn you on? Yes. I uh, you just write the reciprocal, because that's 1 over the inside. That's the derivative of ln of something. It's 1 over the inside. And then i got to focus on the derivative of this behemoth here, right? Become a plus 2. There you go. Now, definitely with ln stuff, when the inside's more complicated, especially ratios and stuff, you, want, you, you pretty much don't want to multiply stuff out because stuff might cancel. In fact, it's basically this, the idea of this, just the next level. A little bit harder. There's a lot of shit going on here, but something is more than likely going to cancel. So I'm telling you, don't multiply shit out, put stuff together. You want to think the other way. So this comes for the ride. I take this guy's derivative. It'll be derivative of the top. What's the derivative of the top? What's the derivative of the top here? Two times, Two times stuff times derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of the inside? All right, is everybody cool with that? That's the derivative of something squared. How do you take the derivative of something squared? Bring the two down in front of something to the first power times the derivative of the something. That's exactly what that is. Uh, all right, times the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Minus the top. Oh, boy. Times the derivative of the bottom. Derivative of the bottom is one. Thank God something about this one is easy. All over x plus 1 squared. So notice how one of these die. And you can't just kill like this here. So you have to kill one from each, right? You can take a 3x squared plus 2 out and kill one of them with one of those. Is that decent? You guys see that? You can't break into a subtraction and addition problem with division, but if both parts are dividable, then you can do that. Or even divisible. I don't care if your math grammar is up to speed. Like mine sometimes is. So what do we have left alive in here? We got, uh, let me just use some room. I have 12x, right? 12x squared plus 12x minus 3x squared minus 2. Is that for the top? Is that cool? 12x squared plus 12x, distributing through there. And then I got one of these left, bring the minus through. All over, one of these and one of these. So then, of course, I get 9x squared plus 12x minus 2 all over one of these, one of these. That top won't factor, so screw it. I'm done. Uh, anybody make it all the way to the end there? You're like, I ain't going to say it. You guys see how I got to the end of that one. So yeah, it's not acceptable to stop 
the minute you do it, you, you got to simplify something if you can. If something will cancel, if something will combine, if something will reduce, you got to do it. Any questions on that one? Zoom out for that one. Bless you. Okay, all right. Uh, what's the next one here? I'll give myself some room. Oh, yeah, this dude. That's the whole reason why I did that stuff up there. Was because how can I rewrite this from the beginning? Yeah, for ln sine x, and then I do a derivative. So it'll be 4 over sine x times cosine x. So it just becomes 4 cosine over sinus cotangent. Kind of crazy. So let me ask you guys something. If you guys can just ignore the 4 for a minute. What is the antiderivative of cotangent? ln of sine x. If the derivative of something is this thing, then what's the antiderivative of this thing? That thing I started with, right? I mean, that's antiderivative just tells me go backwards, right? Since the derivative of ln sine x would be cotangent x, the antiderivative of cotangent x must be ln sine x. Now, eventually, we will call antiderivatives, we'll show how they relate to integrals, if you know that word at all. Eventually. Now, J, you can't bring the 2 down because the natural log itself is being squared. So when you start to do this derivative, it's something squared. So you, to do that, you just bring the 2 in front of the thing. And now this is to a first power times the derivative of the inside. Man, that's gross, Jeff. Let me write that again. <laughs> G prime. Give yourself some more. Make sure you guys can see. So it'll be 2 in front of this thing times, to the first power, right, times the derivative of the inside. This is what I mean by write the rule. See how I wrote I, that? Writing the rule means apply the rule. The rule says... Take the derivative of the outside multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Well, I don't have to do all those derivatives at once. I don't even have to know that chain rule is going to happen again. Because when I start to do the derivative of ln 2x minus 3, then I'll see it. I don't have to know ahead of time how many chain rules there will be. I just do them as they come. I have a feeling people often feel that way. They try to write them all out at once. Holy shit. And that's where I get the question, well, how do I know when to stop? That shouldn't even be a question you ask. You just do them as you need them. So here, this stuff comes to the right. It's all done. How to do the derivative of this guy? 1 over 2x minus 3 times derivative of 2x minus 3. Let me just write this like too much. See, is this going to involve a chain rule? No. So there's no question when do I stop? I stop because I don't need another chain rule. I can see it. So what has so at the end of this, oh my god. So this is gonna be two, is that cool? Two times two, so I get four ln of two x minus three over two x minus three. Is that decent? That's everybody, right? All right, let's 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 uh, let's take a break, if you guys need it. So do I. Um.